Hello everybody! I know it's been forever since I've made a video, but I've been busy. I've been finishing up my ASC certification, that's Automotive Service Excellence Certification. That's so I can work on cars as an actual certified mechanic, instead of just somebody who works on cars. So I've been doing that for uh, the last two years, trying to put out videos in the meantime. Uh, and now, I'm finally finished. I finally graduated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But, that was two days ago. And this is today. And today, I have a brand new, to me, 1983 and a half, 84 uh, Ford F-250 with four wheel drive and uh, 460 engine. 7.5 liter, I believe it is. So, that's what we're gonna be working on. Uh, I know for a fact uh, that it will run because the guy was spraying carb cleaner in it when I pulled up and cranking it uh, And it was trying to start so we know that it somewhat works uh, Now We got this one for seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, Which is a steal right now. You can't get any cars for seven hundred and fifty dollars uh, regardless of what it is so Pick this one up. It's got a gun rack in the back, uh, right where you, you know, want guns available to you at all times for whatever reason. Um, that'll never be used. And then it's got various components inside of it. Uh, new mirrors, I believe. Um, there's some stuff in the bed. Honestly, I haven't even looked at. I, I put the title inside, and I towed it here. So. Um, I've seen the engine and I've seen the interior, but I didn't look through it. So it's going to be a surprise for both of us. And since we're in the 1980s, we grabbed American wrenches. So that's the most likely what we'll be using. It's quite the contraption for the throttle here. Ow. And of course it does have cruise control, vacuum, cruise control I'm guessing. Let's see, that spring goes off like that. There's a vacuum advance, or that's the cruise. Let's see here, anything else hooked up to the carburetor? No, except this. What is that? Five eighths? Of course not. Half inch, which I just tried and that wasn't it. Oh, it's already loose. Maybe that's why. Previous owner said the carburetor has not been gone through, but he said he could get it to run by... <coughs> He said he got it to run. I don't know how or why or that. Just disconnected, I guess. Um, so we're just gonna tear everything apart and see what happens. Using all the right tools. No tool sponsorships here. I bought all these things myself. Really hope there's no actual living spiders in here. I see some dead ones. That is gross, nasty in there. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna see about getting some of these rags in here, or at least one of them. That makes me feel better. The stuff's not going to fall down in there. And we've got our carburetor. This is a Motorcraft Motorcraft E3TE right there. So I guess we'll find out. 
All right, it's time to get this carburetor rebit. Rebuilt. After I pick up the shed a bit. Place for everything, everything in its place. Alright, the shed's clean, uh, mostly. The tabletops are clean, mostly. Uh, and I'm going to get started on this carburetor. So let's see what we can find inside. Well, sometimes you gotta know when to quit. And my time was about almost all the way disassembling that carburetor. Uh, I bought a kit that was uh, supposedly the right kit, but it was not the right kit. And I said, you know what? How much is a new carburetor? Well, an OEM one is about $550. Well, how much is an aftermarket? Oh, it's $360. Well, for $360 bucks plus what I paid for it, it's still a great deal. So, I bit the bullet and I got an Edelbrock. It's not the best one out there. Sniper EFI would be preferred, but it's still pretty good. However, that doesn't fix the problem that I'm having now, which is I don't have any fuel line. So I've got to go get some fuel line and I'll come back and we'll see if that works. All right, well, since you guys last saw, I have gotten some fuel line, carburetors on. I don't have any of the vacuum lines hooked up or anything like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the fuel, which is this wonderful wire right here. Start it up. She's a runner. Heck yeah. Easy as pie when you put a new carburetor on it. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder what works. Headlights? Hey, hey headlights. Both of them. Markers work. Let's see if the blinkers work. I'm gonna guess no. Oh, right there, look. Awfully slow. Is this one working? Yeah, that one's working. How about the other side? Uh, mm, you have to hold it, but it works if you hold it. Hell yeah. Lights. Oh my goodness. Oh, we don't have a coolant in this thing. Shit. Look at that. I wonder if it moves. I don't want to try it yet. It's too dark. Power steering? Hey, power steering. And it doesn't whine like all the Fords. Look at that. 
Heck yeah! All the belts are moving. Let's get some coolant in this thing. Man, this thing runs great. I was kind of scared that it wasn't, like I knew it would fire, but I didn't think it was gonna run this good. So, uh, next things to do is um, figure out what works and what doesn't. So, uh, I need to plug those vacuum lines or route them somehow, um, uh, route them to where they need to go. And then there's a couple more things, maybe the AC works. Would that be a miracle? It's R12. Wouldn't have to charge it. That'd be pretty sweet. But it's running. I put coolant in it. I haven't seen any leaks. I guess next we'll find out uh, what works. Two days later, I finally have time to work on this thing again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this filter in line with the fuel. I know that there's a filter already in the tank, but I want to be sure that this fuel is properly filtered. So we'll take this guy off, lube it up a little bit, stick it on here, ah, there we go, and then run this fuel line back to the carburetor so it's a little long but that's okay now we can see the fuel flow properly and we're all good there we've got binocular covers I'm guessing uh, those are trash engine management technology whatever this is it looks old uh, some fuel line some clamps I can use those and more clamps I could use those so we'll save that save that save the fuel line I think I'm gonna get rid of this look at that I got a free screwdriver too some more screws and uh, that's garbage got a tool look at that nice uh, Phillips head look at that XLT And what else do we have here? So these are brand new mirrors for the sides. Got two of them here. Set those aside. Might just have to install those. And then more alligator clips, I'll keep those. Sign away, decongestion. I guarantee that's expired. Got our fire extinguisher here. Uh, it's actually overcharged. Don't know how that happened after however many years it's been sitting in here. 
the factory seat actually looks really good underneath this uh, like there's one tear right here and it's really hard like it's soft but it's hard so that's the truck cleared out at least in the cab now we go to the back yeah, they don't open like that anymore air filter not for this truck charcoal grill or propane grill chair uh, what is this more fuel line another chair funnel I'll actually keep that fuel pump or at least the sending unit to a fuel pump this goes right here. Ow, that's hot. So, uh, that's broken. Oh, goodness gracious. I don't even want to reach my hand in here. I think that'll fit on the Edelbrock, but there's that. Anyway, there's the bottom of it. Maybe. Oh yeah, look at that. All that rust in there. Beautiful. And I got a water drip on me. It's not raining. Well, that's enough of that one. Gross. Okay. Looks like that's all that was in there. So, back on the engine, I still have to hook up vacuum lines. We did get that fuel filter in there. So that's ready to go um, I want to get the fuel system set up right now this dude had it so that this wire hooked up to the positive lead on the battery came over here and hooked up to the fuel pump relay we'll get back to this a little bit later all right today I'm gonna to see if this thing will start without uh, the fuel pump connected to the positive side of the battery I'm gonna see if the oil pressure sender is actually working causing the fuel pump to turn on and uh, we'll see I'm guessing that's gonna be a no See if it moves. Uh, I think we'll start with a vacuum for now. Get those vacuum lines checked out. See where we go from there. I got some wires here, and I got this little piece. I wonder if that will have. I'll bet you this is for the Ford. That goes there. This goes here. If I screw that onto there. Just like so. I'll bet you that clips right into there. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now my throttle's hooked up. That was easy. I'll have to tighten that, but I need vacuum for a bunch of stuff. Like this one, I think I could probably hook up to right there. Let's see. guy up to right there there's a vacuum then we've got all kinds of wires over here 
This is for the electronic choke. There's a vacuum wire or a vacuum line over here too. Curious if that if we could put that right there. That's a vacuum line. Now we just have this one, which if we look in the if we look in the book here tells us it's a PCV port. PCV is right here. There's the PCV and it seems like it's working still. We'll hook that up to uh, vacuum I guess. I need some three quarter which I might have in the back. Let me look in that pile of junk and then we'll see if we can hook that into the PCV on that carburetor. Very good. And then PCV valve goes there. Just like that. All right, probably not supposed to be near the fuel line like that. But now, it looks like we can start it up again and not have any vacuum leaks. Except for this one back here, which I can take care of right now. Just like that. I think that's all our vacuum lines. All right, so since we need to go to the car body somewhere, why the heck not just go right here with a T25. Yeah. And that back up. So that's back up, and we can run this over to where it needs to go, right there. Click in, perfect. And then this wire, this is the positive wire, we can actually cut this guy off, right here. Get rid of that, uh, get rid of that. Shave this guy. All right, that should be heated it up, heated it up, heated it up, heat up, heat, heated up enough. Look at that. Look how well that flows now. So good. Easy. Of course, you can't see any of it because my hand's in the way. That's probably tight enough. Hook that back up. Look at that. Why don't you guys let me know what you think of this uh, revival? Even though I didn't do the carburetor, I didn't do it the, the cool kids way, but I kind of like driving these cars and I don't really want to mess with that stuff. I bought this kit and the only thing that fit was the power valve and the accelerator pump. I was like, you know what? For a little bit of money, I can just go buy a new carb. So I did. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get in next time we work on it. So I was doing some thinking and doing some research. And with this truck, in the event of a crash, there's an oil pressure sensor that cuts off fuel if there's no oil pressure sensed. In the event of an accident, you want the fuel to shut off. If the engine stalls, you want the fuel to shut off. So we know the oil pressure sensor is bad, or the, the pressure sending unit is bad. All right, since I don't want to do a lot of extra work, I'm gonna, just going to wire a switch to the fuel pump. Um, I'm not planning on crashing this thing. If I do need to like fix it correctly, I will eventually. Um, but as for right now, I'm just going to wire in this switch. Some blue wire from the positive cable over to the switch, and then over to the fuel pump relay. So, I guess we'll get started on that.
this wire is going to go to either the battery or the uh, switch. Let's go measure that. And we need to make another one. This one's going to go to the battery. So I just did that one to the fuel pump relay. Okay, and we'll wire this one to the uh, battery. All right, that's wired up in there. I just have to wire it over here. All right, that wire's in. Now the path positive. Okay. This goes here. That goes back on there. We'll tighten it down carefully or just undo the battery because, you know, that would be the smart thing to do. Tighten that down now. When we kick on that switch, it should kick on the fuel pump. It does kick on the fuel pump, so we turn this on. If you listen carefully. Or listen to the motorcycle going by. Anyway, fuel pump is now hooked up to a switch. So that takes care of almost everything. I still need to see if the factory air cleaner fits and zip tie that wire up. Well that's it for that. Uh, the fuel system is hooked up. Only one tank right now. I think the other tank is just completely uh, sending in and needs to be replaced. I'm not going to be spending the money on that right now. Next thing is distributor, wires and plugs. All right, so I just thought of this thing in my head. I'm like, okay, so how do we do this without like messing up where all the wires are? So I was thinking, what if we took the wires off this cap, put them on this cap and just had the cap like set aside, then remove the distributor and then like from there we can set it. So I'm gonna pull the cap off and pull this cap off. Cool. Now we just take the wires and we we'll put them on here so we've got number one cylinder here so we're going to try and line that up best we can so if that's number one we know that this one goes here and we'll be replacing these wires too, so. There, cool. We can take this coil off since that one's easy. So we can set that aside. Then we can pull this distributor and not have to worry about um, you know, so we got we got the uh, we got the rotor facing right here in this direction. So we take this one out and make sure this one's facing the same direction. It's really easy, actually. Looks like it's been marked here before for where the distributor needs to be. So I'm going to reference that point there. I'm going to move this over, and that way I can get to the bolt easier. There we go, there's the bolt and the hold down. Then we need to make sure we know where this is at. So it's facing right at the temperature sensor. And we pull up on it. Just like that.
And there's the distributor. Right there, that's where it should be. There we go. Perfect. Facing right where we need it to. Now we can reinstall the hold down. Okay, that's tight enough for now. This is exactly where we need it to be. Pull that vacuum off and hook this vacuum up to it. Cool. And then our power for it, we hook that up just like this. Just, just like this. Okay, so that's hooked up. Now, we can put the cap back on. Just like so. Hook it on up. And then hook up this side. Now we just need to run new wires and put in new plugs. Okay, well, now that we've got the new distributor in, let's go with the uh, new wires. Yep, those are shot. Not shot, I'm sure they could be cleaned up, but I'm not gonna use them. All right, first one is officially done. Let's move on to the next one. We'll go with this one next. All right, I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently just cause I know that I can leave the wires where they should be. I'm just gonna pull the wires. Pull the plugs, replace the plugs, then do the wires separate. That's better. We have the air cleaner to put on and and then we could take it for its inaugural drive. Belts should probably be replaced too. You can hear them squeaking a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about those right now. All right guys, inaugural drive. Oh, kind of nervous. Because the brakes aren't very good. But we'll get past that. The seat up a little bit, man. I'm short. There we go. Fuel pump on. Forgot that. Yeah, there's definitely air in the system. Okay. Well, we won't worry about that. Roll this thing down so I can get some fresh air.
71. I have to wait till I get to a complete stop to put it in first gear because it's a branding gear. sorted out. steering I mean it's squeaking now that's just the belt but like there's there's no whine no whine from the power steering at all that's rare to find on an old Ford I mean it's charging oil pressure is great fuel gauge doesn't work temperatures good 41,000 miles or 140. I wonder if four wheel drive works. So we're in two high, four high, neutral. That came off. So it says four by four on the dash. That's neutral, that's four high, that's two. But if we don't put the hubs in, then is it really four wheel drive? I'm pretty sure it's not. The transfer case is there, but it's not connected to the wheels themselves. So we have to put the lockers in. Or the, the hubs, we have to lock the hubs in. So, but it says four by four on the dash, so. We know that at least the indicator of it working works. What light is that? Shift. There's a shift light. Shift, brake. I wonder if that works. Nope. All right. Well, let's turn this beast off. Fuel pump off. 
and there's only a couple more things to do to button this thing up. Man, the, with this dash mat, this dash is immaculate. It's almost, almost daily drivable. I mean, it's daily drivable now, but to make it comfortable and fun for me, it's almost daily drivable. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for liking all my videos. Thanks for subscribing down below. And thanks for leaving a comment. I love, he I love hearing what you guys think of my projects. Uh, even if it's negative comments, it's still nice to see that people are watching. So, uh, thank you. And I will see you guys in the next video, which is probably going to be this one. Or, mm, I have a little secret project coming up. Uh, that's not so secret. You guys saw it in this video. See if you can find the Easter egg.